Hi guys, Tony Dubbed here and today I'm doing a video review on the Philips 254B1. This is a 1440p 24 inch monitor. Now the monitor that you can see behind me can be found for around 200 pounds in the UK. Now given the monitor is absolutely brand new, it might not be available in all regions, but the locally link in the description below will take you to your localized Amazon store. So if and when it does become available in your region, you should be able to buy it. Now before continuing, I just do want to mention that there are a few other alternatives you might want to consider. They will be also in the description below. I haven't reviewed all of them, but they're from my research. They seem to be somewhat similar spec to this Philips monitor. Also, just a quick little plug, if you have Instagram, do follow me on Instagram, that would be greatly appreciated. So now let's get into the review. So first off, let's talk about specs. Now this Philips is technically 23.8 inch. It's got an IPS panel, it's got a three-sided borderless design, it's got 16 by nine aspect ratio, runs 1440p, at 75 hertz. Now you want to bear in mind that is over HDMI or display port. It's also got a DVI port, but that will not um, do that bandwidth. Elsewhere, the monitor has adaptive sync. So yes, that means free sync kind of technology. You can also use it with NVIDIA G-Sync. Although from my tests, I did find a little bit of a stuttering that was occurring. So your mileage may vary. I have an RTX 2080 Super for your reference and I was connected over display port. Other than that, there are two, uh, two watt speakers which are built in, they're not particularly good. They're just really mainly for Windows notifications or let's say if you're having a Skype call or Zoom call of some sorts. But uh, if you're gonna be listening to music and you're gonna be gaming, for example, for some reason on this monitor, then I would highly suggest getting either a DAC with headphones or a set of bookshelf speakers like you'll be able to see behind me. So next up is the build quality. Now the monitor is actually really good in this respect. It's got a very sturdy stand and it's actually kind of like metallic, whereas most um, monitors at this price range will have a plastic stand. So for example, the Asus, which can be found at around the same price tag, which again will be linked down in the description below, has a fixed stand. So it's quite nice to see this um, monitor has a fully flexible stand and furthermore that it's got a three-sided borderless design, which again, if you compare it to the BenQ at its price range, has got pretty thick bezels. So again, it's quite nice to see that design and build quality have been kind of, not prioritized, but have been taken into consideration. And this monster is quite nice in that respect. Now we're gonna move into the OSD section, but before doing that, and I will mention in the OSD section, is the fact that it's got physical buttons at the front. And uh, that's quite rare because normally you'd find physical buttons underneath the monitor uh, or you'll have touch sensitive buttons. In this case, you've got actually physical buttons at the front. And I quite like that. So next up, we've got the monitor's OSD. Now you've got the power sensor, light sensor, which can be enabled or disabled. That's through the little sensor that's found at the front of the monitor. And you've got low blue mode. You've got different levels that you can uh, that you can use. So here you can see level two, for example, you've got one, two, three, and four. Of course, the level um, adjusts the amount of low, um, well, blue light that's being um, disabled, so to speak. Inputs, you can switch inputs, DVI, HDMI 1.4 and display port. Then the picture settings here, again, you can adjust to your heart's content. It's good to see adaptive sync, which is enabled over here, which you can um, you can enable if you like. You can see over here, I've got it as off. Then you've got smart response as well, which I'll touch upon in just a bit. Audio, so these got built-in speakers, you can adjust the volume. In terms of the color settings, it's worth bearing in mind that if you were to set into uh, sRGB mode, it's going to disable the um, the brightness control. And if any movement you have on the brightness control, it will disable sRGB mode and lob it into um, the color temperature uh, mode, which in this case is 6,500 Kelvin. You can see you've got different adjustments as well, uh, depending on what you will prefer. And then you've got the user defined mode, which you can adjust the red, green, and blue settings as well. Then from there, we've got the language of the OSD, and then you've got the OSD settings. And then through the setup, you've got resolution notice and a bit of information about the monitor. Uh, so that includes the serial number, the refresh rate, and the um, what it's actually running at. And now we get on to image quality. Now the reason I'm actually doing this review is because someone on YouTube commented on my Philips 276C8 review, which is a 1440p USB type C monitor, and was wondering about this monitor. So shout out to him or her for actually pointing that out on my um, on the comment section. And in this respect, I was very much intrigued myself to see how this cheaper monitor would compare to its much more expensive sibling. So here, I was actually quite disappointed at the overall color accuracy of the uh, 245B1. Now there's a multitude of reasons behind this. Now, first off, 
I what I do is when I test monitors, I log them to their sRGB mode if they've got one. In this respect, this monitor does have sRGB mode. It does lock the brightness to 100%, which I found that a little bit odd. Normally it's around 70%. In this respect, what I found is that the monitor was hitting the sRGB gamut coverage at 99.7%. But the volume that it was offering, which was 131.5%, was outside the sRGB spectrum. In other words, it's kind of overzealous in those colors. When I did put it onto the calibration, calibration report, it was not surprising to find that the monitor actually got an average DLT of 2.1 with a total of a maximum of 5.4. Looking through the colors, which you'll be able to see on your screen, you can see it doesn't really hit them as you would expect. Now, I was left a bit disappointed purely because the other Philips monitor, which seems pretty much identical other than the fact that it's got USB Type-C, is the fact that this monitor is just not hitting that same level of accuracy. Now, does this really or truly matter for people who are buying a 200 pound 1440p IPS monitor? Well, if you're not a video grader or you're gonna be looking for picture editing at a professional level, then you'll be perfectly happy with it. Now, the reason I say this is because when it comes to my own eyes, when I was looking at this monitor, I was very much impressed to see how it pops, like in terms of the colors, how they pop in, in terms of the general appearance of the monitor out the box. Non-calibrated or anything like that, be it in its sRGB mode, user mode, and you, of course you can tailor that, or in its 1500 Kelvin preset mode, it looks good. And yes, it doesn't hit the sRGB standard, but it does look good to the naked eye. Now the contrast ratio might be something that you might want to consider buying another panel or spending more money because at around 900 to one, it wasn't that great. And even though I lobbed it to the user mode, which then boosted up contrast ratio to around 950 to one, it still was below par in comparison to other IPS panels, which should be hitting around 1,200 to one or more. Now I also did test the backlight bleeds and and the uh, brightness uniformity. This is somewhat panel lottery, but in this respect, I was actually pleasantly surprised. There was a little bit of bleed at the uh, top left of the monitor, and you can see it through over here via the uniformity check. It's a little bit off. It's not to be overly surprised about. It is an IPS panel, and truthfully, this is actually pretty acceptable given at least this panel was perfectly acceptable. And finally, I do wanna talk about its gaming credentials. Now, this isn't a gaming monitor. It does have adaptive sync and it does run at 75 Hertz over 60 Hertz at 1440p. It is not a responsive monitor, even set to the faster or the fastest setting. I did notice quite a bit of inverse ghosting. Um, again, this is over DisplayPort to my RTX 2080 Super and playing a game which is not really graphically intensive like Counter-Strike. So all I'm trying to say over here is that it wasn't really responsive. And furthermore, the input lag wasn't that great either. And this all leads me onto my verdict. Would I recommend this Philips monitor? Well, quite frankly, I think it sits in a somewhat awkward situation because its panel isn't quite color accurate and its gaming credentials aren't there. I know it's not quite a gaming monitor, but it's not there in comparison to, let's say, the AOC, which is a fantastic gaming monitor, well, on a budget for 75 hertz, 1440p, as long as you can get over the fact that it's a larger size, 31.5 inch monitor. Now, in comparison to its similar monitors that come in at its price range, around 200 pounds, the BenQ is a far better pick for designers or let's say if you are a photo editor or video grader, then you might want to set, uh, get that monitor instead. In comparison to the Asus, well, this one has a somewhat of a premium design and quality in that respect and its stand is fully adjustable. So I would definitely pick it over the Asus equivalent. That is it. I mean, it's, it's quite hard to judge it because personally, I would say get the BenQ or if you, if you want something a little bit larger and want something that's a little bit better tailored to games, then you might want to get the AOC. If you don't care about either of those things in terms of panel accuracy, gaming performance, or you want a smaller size monitor, then this Philips should basically tick every box in, in, in that you might have. So there we have it, guys. That's been my independent, unbiased, unpaid review. If you've enjoyed this, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to see more, and of course, favor and share with your family and friends as it always helps the channel grow. All right, guys, I've been Totally Dubbed. Take care and bye-bye.